probably about two and a half to three hours after I'd initially uh, felt the, the first sensation, uh, I was no longer able to walk. I was no longer able to stand. My left side was um, very much you know, numb, um, without much feeling. I didn't have much control of my fingers on my left hand. Um, and I was then told that, yeah, I had suffered a stroke. Initially, there was obviously fear and just sort of, okay, you know, what's my life going to be like from this point on? Am I going to be, what's, what sort of mobility am I going to have or lack of mobility? Is my family going to have to take care of me? Am I going to be able to dress myself? You know, all sorts of things, you know, sort of go through your mind at that point. And it's, it's very scary. The doctors told me that um, you know, your best chance for any stroke victim, the best chance for recovery is to immediately get into physical therapy. So I was two days later, I was allowed to start physical therapy. Um, ironically, that first walk was about 200 meters, um, which is the event that I you know, held the world record at and was uh, once the fastest man in, in the world and in history at that event. Um, and it took about 15 minutes for me to, to, to cover that 200 meters. And, you know, ordinarily, I'm sure that, you know, anyone in that situation would be disappointed and, and, and but I wasn't. I was actually encouraged and it's what encouraged me because with every step, I could experience and feel some very tiny, I mean, very small incremental improvements. And as a sprinter where, you know, you, the wins and losses can be measured in hundreds and thousands of seconds and you're dealing with, you know, tiny, tiny incremental improvements every day. I could recognize that and, and I got back to my room and I said to my wife, um, I'm going to make a full recovery, I'm sure of it, and I'm going to make this recovery faster than anyone has, has ever done it before.